Ken Burns, an American filmmaker, is known for his unique shooting style where he actually pans the camera into still imagery. Now, the reason why Final Cut Pro and iMovie actually has this feature is due to a deal that Steve Jobs famously penned with Ken Burns where he would actually get Apple equipment for endorsing the use of his name for this feature within Final Cut Pro. So as stated, Burns often gives life to still photographs by slowly zooming in on subjects of interest and panning from one subject to another. For example, in a photograph of a baseball team, as shown below, he might slowly pan across the faces of the players and come to rest on the player who is the subject of the narrator. For example, Rizzo here is a famous Cubs player. Let's say you wanted to do a documentary on him, you would focus on him at the end of the pan. So in Final Cut Pro, if you import an image or even text from an actual image, um, you go ahead and increase the length that that image shows statically on the screen as so. However, if you go over to your preview window and select Crop from the drop-down menu, you'll notice that there will be an option for Ken's Burns effect all the way on the right. Now when I click that, you'll get two preview boxes the green one being the start of the sequence and the red one being where you want to end up. Now you could pan, you could end up at different points within the actual image. So it could go up and down, left and right, or even diagonally. So here I'm just going to size the boxes to be about the same size. I'm going to start by moving my green box, the starting point all the way to the right. And I want to add the pan all the way to the left for the subject of, let's say my documentary about Rizzo. Once you're done, you want to go up and click Done. And then when you play it, you'll notice that it's done pretty much. You could now pan. It will show the pan going from right to left, but it doesn't really end there. So you, first, you can increase how fast it pans by shortening the length of time the clip should be on the screen. The longer that it is, the pretty much slower the pan is going to be. However, one trick is to actually add a freeze frame at the end of the pan. The way this works is by waiting until you get the end of the clip. This could also be done in the middle. Going up to your menu bar and clicking Edit and Add Freeze Frame. You'll notice that it will go ahead and make a duplicate of that point at the end where you wanted the freeze frame and it will just stay still at that point. Again, that's under Edit, Add Freeze Frame. You'll notice when I press play that it will actually stop and show a static image at the end now. So now the freeze frame acts as a buffer at the end so you could add text without having to mess with the panning speed, which is really useful.